We're looking at Matthew 12. And we have an invitation to obey the gospel that is based on the concept of eternal judgment. One of the foundational principles of Hebrews chapter 6, one of the fundamentals of the gospel of Christ is eternal judgment. And there is a judgment coming. Matthew 12 talks to us about the fact that the tree is known by its fruit. Jesus said, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. And these, uh, these three things go together quite well. The tree is good and therefore its fruit is good, or the tree is bad and its fruit is bad. One way or the other, come clean. What is it going to be? The fact is, the, the, what the tree is, what kind of tree it is, is known by its fruit. Um, lots of ways of trying to guess what it might be, but what it is, is what it produces. That's what our life is like. It might look like one thing or seem like one thing, but what our life is is what our life produces, what we are doing for the Lord, whether it's good or whether it's bad. The tree is known by its fruit. What is the outcome of our actions and our choices is the thing that tells you what kind of tree we are, what kind of life we are living. In the 34th verse, he said, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The brood of vipers is to say snake children. These are little, you know, the brood, they're, they're babies. Born from snakes, meaning our, our background in the world, our, our ways that were not friendly to God is what he's talking about. That we came to him uh, not already being right. We came to him so that we could become right, so we could be forgiven and start living right. But he said, how can you speak good when you're evil? Not saying that every one of you who hears what Jesus is saying is evil, because some have obeyed the gospel and have repented. But he's saying, when there is evil in the heart, you can't say what is right. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's like the, the heart fills up with something, and the abundance is the overflow. It's like the heart is filling up, and this is coming up your throat until it comes out of your mouth. <laughs> so what comes out of your mouth, what's telling about that is what comes out of your mouth is what your heart is full of. That's what's so bad about cursing. Now people are like, well, it's just a stray word. No, it's not. Your heart is full of that word before it comes out of your mouth. You are very angry. You are out of control is what's happening. Out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. It, it is the overflow, you know, the overflow valve, the check. <laughs> so if the heart is full of goodness, then great. It's what he says in the 35th verse, the good person, out of his good treasure brings forth good. So the things that leave that person's mouth are good because that's what's in their heart and that's what fills their heart. You have to have love in your heart and you have to have enough love in that heart that the love comes out in the things that you say. That's the treasure that's inside of you. Where your heart is or where your treasure is, your heart will be too. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. These are just different ways of saying the same thing. The tree is known by its fruits. The mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. The good person out of the good treasure inside of him brings forth what is good. The evil person out of his evil treasure inside of him brings forth evil. So there's this store inside of you, this, this you know, you're holding a whole bunch of things there, and that's the thing that comes out. Whatever there is treasured up, whatever is overflowing, whatever is just the very, if you will, the very nature of this thing, this person, that's what comes out. So the good person brings forth good. The evil person brings forth evil. What he means by this, we said the tree is known by its fruits, but what he's saying here by implication is that every person is going to be judged by what they bring forth. If they do good, they are good. If they do evil, they are evil. That's how the judgment is going to be. He said, 
In the 36th verse, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. A day comes, a fixed day, a day of judgment. Acts 17 said that God has fixed a day, appointed a day on which he will judge the living and the dead by his son Jesus. On that day, people give account for every careless word. Because though we think of it as a careless word, it actually came from the abundance of what's inside. So it means a lot. Words mean something. And in the 37th verse, he gives us another parable or another um, proverb. By your words, you will be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Which puts it on us. It's up to us. God is going to judge, and it's up to him to justify or condemn, meaning to pronounce just in court or to condemn in court. It's his court, the judgment day. By our own words will we be justified, by our own words will, be, will we be condemned. So it's up to us whether we will be saved or whether we will be lost by what comes out from our hearts. We have to make our hearts right with God. Words justify, words condemn. The heart has to be right with God. You have to repent. Understanding that God is right and put Him first, His desires first, and put Jesus on in baptism for forgiveness of sins. Yes, what's in the heart matters. I remember being a manager. It wasn't that long ago. And it was observed that when you're in the business of talking all day, you cannot hide what you really think. So... Don't try to watch your words. People say, watch your words. Don't watch your words. You can't. Watch your heart. <laughs> well, I think that's a stupid idea. Well, maybe you should think about it some more. Understand why it's being done. Why that makes sense. Why maybe that's okay for now. It's close enough. And then you won't say things that you regret. Fix your heart. And then the words will follow. That was just in management. The Lord is saying the heart is betrayed by the words that we speak. We have to fix the heart. We have to be right with God first in the heart before we have a hope of being right with him in our actions. If today we can help you obey the gospel, we have water prepared. If as a Christian you haven't lived right, repent, make it right with him. Let us pray with you and for you to be restored to him that we may be strengthened too by your resolve. If you need our prayers or if you need to be baptized, let that need be known now by coming to the front while we together stand and sing the song selected.